Michael with Mindful Art Studio. And I just want to welcome you to um, my office hours. Um, my version of office hours is an open studio time. So I'm going to be working on the technique that I talked about in my blog post today, which is using really, really simple drawing techniques in order to help you get inspired and get unstuck and um, possibly even help you with your mood. So um, if you've got any questions, go ahead and pop into the um, Q&A by hitting, there's a grid on your upper right screen. If you hit that grid, and it's got, I think, like nine boxes, you hit that, it'll bring up the Q&A. And the bottom right-hand side, there'll be a little box. You can hit it there. Um, so cool, so I'm gonna get started. Um, and the technique that I've been talking about is just using really simple, simple, simple forms. Um, and so lately I've been really excited about using circles. Now I always do a lot of circles in my art, but lately I've just been kind of using them nonstop and it's so fun to just see what this really, really simple thing can do. Because I don't really plan. Um, I'll just make a really simple form like this and just kind of see where it goes. Um, I'm not overlapping the way that I'm doing this. You guys see that appearing? It's really tiny. Um, but it's a really fun technique and I find it's very relaxing because you, there's really, you know, you don't need to think about it at all. Um, now you could make like a very organic shape like this and really just fill the entire thing with circles. Um, and that would be a complete and total no brainer. And, um, for me at least that would be very relaxing. You have to think about yourself and your own personality. For some people that would be, um, that would drive them crazy. <laughs> it would be totally unrelaxing. So, um, you know, you have to think about what would help you. So, cool. And um, I just want to welcome people as they hop in. Make sure you hit that grid in the upper right-hand corner. Hello. Here's my mic on pen. Um, of your screen, um, there's a grid with, I think, like nine boxes. You hit that grid, and then the Q&A box will pop up on the right-hand side of your screen, and at the very bottom, you can type in your question. Um, so uh, as you guys have questions, go ahead and, and put them in there, and I can answer them um, while we're working. You know, and you can feel free to draw along with me. I think that's a really great way to learn. Or you can just watch and listen. Um, I have a group called Creative Self Care on Facebook, and it's a wonderful little private group where um, we all share lots of tips and tricks about developing a regular self care practice that um, a lot of it revolves around creativity and art. Um, and um, I like to share a lot of my best tips and tricks there. And um, one of the people in that group was sharing with me that she actually likes to listen to any of the webinars that I do. Um, she'll put it on in YouTube and then just listen while she's in the car and that she finds it's a great way to get some ideas and inspiration while she's on the go. Um, and I often do that kind of thing as well. Um, so I think that's a super idea. So that might be something, you know, when people are sort of looking for ways to fit in some artistic inspiration, um, that can be a great thing to do. And um, speaking of which, tonight I am going to a wonderful art opening um, for a wonderful artist. Her name is Allie Cavanaugh, um, and it's in Boston at the Gold Gallery. And I think it's from six to nine. And I'm really excited because I have not been to a gallery opening in much too long. And um, it's one of those things that really does just feed my inner artist and um, gives me so much. Uh, and her work is so, so amazing. She does very realistic looking watercolors of very strong girls. So that's really right up my alley. 
So again, with this technique, with the circles, I'm not planning anything. And right now, what kind of just seemed right, um, lots of times I will put them into clusters because that's what it just feels like it wants to do. But this time it seemed like, at least for the moment, they were wanting to stay sort of separate. And so that's what I did. And can you see how when I'm working, my language even is oriented towards thinking about what the art piece wants? And I know it sounds a little funny, but really I find it's one of the main ways that I kind of work in this very um, organic or spirit-oriented way that um, really keeps me feeling very grounded. And it feels for me also very kind of spiritual because I don't have to focus so much on the product and the outcome. My job is really just to show up and to do something and to make something. And when I can let go of the product in that way, it really just makes it so much easier for me to, to create um, every day. Uh, I think lots of times, you know, whether you consider yourself an artist or you are someone who likes to do art and isn't really at the point of thinking about yourself as an artist yet, um, it, it can be a lot of pressure thinking that everything you create needs to somehow be good. Um, and and I think this this kind of approach really takes that pressure off in a way that I really enjoy and love and keeps me feeling like I can create because um, there's not so much pressure for it to be so wonderful. Um, and I think that that's important because if you're going to develop a creative self-care practice, then for me, it's really not about the product as much as it is about learning to have an outlet for your feelings, learning to express your feelings through the art and just find a way to kind of tune out and let go. Hi, John. Thanks for your question. He says, um, in what way do your drawings show who you are? That's a really intriguing question. Um, I don't know how to answer that. I, I guess mine, I, I guess my first question is I'd love to hear your answer to that question because I get the feeling that maybe you have an answer to it. So I'd love to hear about it. Um, and I guess I'd say mine show who I am probably kind of in exactly what I'm talking about because I think it says a lot about the way that I approach art. It's not always, I mean, obviously there are some things that are very planned, like these two paintings behind me were quite planned, both from photographs, one that I took and one that I found. Um, and I think the subject matter certainly says something about me, like this one behind me um, is a landscape and landscape has so much to do and, and the outdoors has so much to do with me and who I am and how much I feel at home in that environment. Um, and I think with the, my less planned stuff too, I tend to like to choose very natural looking um, shapes and forms and environments. And um, that approach of uh, trying to let it be sort of a, a self-care space and a spiritual space for me by letting it be so unplanned, I think that says a lot about me. But you know, I'm not sure whether or not the, sort of the casual observer would know that without me explaining it. So I hope that answered your question, John, and please drop in and let me know what you would say about that because I'd be so curious and I'd love to know what kind of art you're doing as well. Awesome. So um, there are a lot of options. Like if you're following along and you're thinking about, you know, if I'm doing this circle technique, you know, you can leave it just as is and not do anything else to it and let it just be um, kind of a line drawing in black and white. But you can also come in with some chalk pastels and do some pretty interesting things then to create the space. And I'm just gonna grab those. I don't know if you guys can still see me. This is my um, converted, this is called a butler's cabinet. And I have converted mine to be a place where I hold my art supplies. Uh, so it's kind of fun to welcome you into my art space today in that way. Um, I also have a dresser that I've converted 
um, to hold a lot of my um, papers and fabrics. Um, I'm not a great seam seamstress or anything, but I like to play. And also, um, I very often will put fabric into my books. Like this is a junk journal that I made not too long ago. Anyone who's on my mailing list saw a special mailing that I sent out about it, but this is fabric. And I was able to create a um, little pocket here. And so I have like a little watercolor piece in there that I did. Um, so that can slide right back in. But I use fabric together with paper a lot. Um, and I like that interplay. And for instance, there are some papers that are really high quality that you can find that um, feel almost like, and I don't know if you can tell by just looking at it, they feel almost like a fabric. They're very strong and kind of thicker, but they move well. Um, so that can be really fun, but I do a lot with sewing on paper too, you can see in there. Um, and I've got another pa um, page that's all sewn together. I was showing this on my Instagram feed today. You can see how I've pieced together some different magazine photo collage bits and a photo of mine. So just to give you an idea of some of the sewing things. But anyway, going back to my, um, how I store some of my supplies, I was saying, um, so I have a dresser that um, I refinished um, with a combination of paint and some of those really high quality papers. Um, and then I got some really awesome um, drawer pulls from Anthropology. They have awesome, awesome um, drawer pulls. So if you're thinking about, um, how you'd like to store some of your supplies, I definitely recommend, you know, the next time you're at a yard sale and there's a um, dresser, definitely think about picking one up because that's a great way to store papers. I will fold my papers um, into quarters and then stand them up. Um, and like tissue papers, for instance, that's a great way, or, you know, more fancy papers, that's a great way to store them um, and be able to easily access and find what you're looking for. So I think I'm going to go for a little bit of red. This is a um, Conti chalk crayon. This is a little bit of a stiffer chalk, but it still moves a lot. I have some other chalks that are super um, uh, dusty and movable and very intense. Um, this is like a less intense version. So um, I'm really just tracing roughly along the edge of the form that I created with my thin tip marker and tracing along. Again, I don't have a plan here. I didn't know that I was gonna do this necessarily. Um, in fact, I haven't actually done this exactly before. So we're really just making it up together. So um, again, you guys, if you are just hopping in, um, there is a uh, nine square grid on the top right hand corner of your screen and um, oh look how the chalk <laughs> is dripping down you can see it that's fun um, hit that grid if you'd like to submit a question um, and I'll be able to see it on the right hand side just like John did um, and the chat screen or the Q&A screen will pop up on the bottom right hand corner and then um, some people use tools to smudge. I don't. I personally like using my fingers. Um, I like tuning into it. For me, that's sort of the part of the mindful piece of doing art um, and the way that it helps you to tune into the moment in a really big way is, you know, it's such a sensory experience to make art. There are smells, there are textures that you can feel, there are sounds. Like, I'm guessing that the way that this smudging is happening may be way louder for you guys actually even than it is for me because I've noticed sometimes with these videos um, when I'm scratching my uh, paintbrush across the canvas it sounds super loud for you guys so in a way I think that's kind of good because it kind of helps drive the point home about um, the sensory experience of of art making and how important I think it is. So, um, and like I was saying with the painting, for me, there's a lot of um, landscape always just kind of naturally is what I think about and what comes up for me. So um, already this is very much 
feeling quite, you know, reminiscent of a landscape. Cool. Yes, I am liking this. Um, it's fun to have you guys with me while I'm creating today. I want to thank you for being here. Um, and again, if you want to hop into the Q&A, tell us what kind of art you're doing and what kind of art journaling or art, painting, creative self-care questions you have. So yeah, I'm really just smudging and moving um, the chalk. You can also layer in another, I like to layer in another similar color to give it a little bit more depth. So let me show you the difference. So they're pretty similar, but different. Um, so I'm gonna lay some of this more hot pink color in with the red. And you know, the red that I have even is still kind of in that hot pink family. Um, but see how that's creating some more depth in here. I also like leaving a little bit of the white because that's interesting and creates depth too. Um, definitely creates dust. If you're not someone who likes um, getting your hands dirty and things, you're probably not gonna like this material because um, you definitely get <laughs> nice and dirty. Um, so yeah, you know, or you can always keep um, a rag or paper towels nearby. So I'm gonna go back to my circles for a few minutes because that's what feels right to me. Um, and I'm using a Micron 05 pen. Let me show you. Um, I love using these. Um, I've been talking recently about my portable art kit. Uh, actually, I always talk about my portable art kit. Um, but with my journal, uh, and this is one that's small enough that I keep it and light enough that I keep it in my purse. It's a moleskin, in case you're wondering. So yeah, so really just allowing things to evolve naturally and not worrying so much about what someone else might say or, you know, a lot of people, a lot of us um, struggle with the inner critic and, um, you know, those critical voices in your, our heads can be really, really loud. Uh, you know, like mine could sit here and say, oh, that doesn't look good. Um, what are you doing? Nobody wants to see you on here. Why are you wasting your time? Um, you know, you've only got X people on here, blah, 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 blah. Um, your inner critic will come up with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of excuses. Uh, and again, it's your job to, you know, I think sometimes it's helpful to just let the critic be heard. I will often just write out what the critic has to say. And I talk about this in my, both in my ebook on starting an art journal and also in my um, art journaling video course. Um, let it be heard, give it some airtime, and then ask it to step aside. Okay, so we have a question um, from John. He says, is it okay to go against intuition just to see what happens or to break out of patterns? Sure, I think anything that, um, I think that's a really good question. Yeah, because sometimes our intuition can certainly lead us to kind of do the same old, same old. So um, I love that question. I love giving myself little challenges. Um, I did a blog post, I don't know, several months ago, and um, it was all based on this TED um, talk by this artist named Phil Hansen, um, H-A-N-S-E-N. And it's on my website, I think it's called How to Be a More Cour Courageous Artist. And um, his TED Talk was amazing. So he was um, an artist who did pointillism, that's with all the little teeny tiny dots, incredibly detailed. And um, at some point he got some sort of rare sickness, um, I believe where he got, um, it made, it's a neurological condition if I'm remembering right, where it made his hands shake. And so suddenly he could no longer do those really exact detailed patterns. And I, I don't know if I'm getting all the details right. It might've been in part because he was using um, so much pressure to stay 
kind of exact and detailed. In any case, he really struggled for a while um, and even gave up art altogether for a bit because he couldn't do the kind of art that he enjoyed so much. And um, on one of his trips to the neurologist, the neurologist finally just said to him, let it shake. Uh, and so this idea was so radical to him and it just opened up all these doors for him because he started to do art in the opposite way of how he used to, which was very tight and controlled. And he started doing drawings that were more, um, for folks who are familiar, like gesture drawings, which is just like scribbles. Um, but he's such a talented artist that his scribble drawings were amazing. And then he started, you know, realizing that making a limitation on himself actually made his creativity get bigger and better. And so he started playing with limitation as a way to increase creativity. So he did all these tests basically and experiments to see what he could do and um, how it would affect his art. So he did things like, um, well, the weirdest thing he did was he chewed up food and <laughs> made like sculptures or paintings out of it. They were really amazing, but it was kind of gross. Um, he did things with lit candles. He did things with um, karate chopping and the side of his hand. So he did a painting all with karate chops. So, um, you know, I loved that idea. And so ever since then, I've been trying to challenge myself um, to answer your question, John, to do things with some pretty serious limitations, like, you know, either using just the side of my hand or um, make a painting with just one color. Um, see what you can do, you know, pick, pick two colors that you actually hate and do something with that. Um, see what you can do with your non-dominant hand. All those sor sorts of kind of things that turn your art on its head, I think are super helpful for breaking out of your comfort zone and getting creative and doing something that you wouldn't normally. So that was a great question. Thank you so much for that. Um, and John, if you feel like um, saying, I'd love to hear what kind of art you're doing, um, you can decide if you're comfortable to share that. And, um, and we'll just keep going on our circles here. Kind of see what appears. Um, one thing with this is you, if you want to keep that middle area kind of white, you have to be careful because the chalk comes off obviously on your hand. And especially where I'm kind of balancing, it's a little unnatural for me to be drawing exactly this way because um, of the type of drawing I'm doing. I wouldn't normally draw kind of at this angle probably ever except for wanting to share stuff with you guys. I really like how having a no-brainer can kind of help me really zone down. And one of the things that I was talking about on the blog today, or did I get pink on my face already? And it's so typical of me. <laughs> I can't tell if I did or if it's just on the movie. Well, sorry guys, I have a pink nose, I guess. Oh well, um, I think it's partially the lighting in here too. So, um, I was going to say, let's do a little purple in here. I'm thinking we could add a little life to this, a little depth. And really just rubbing it in, trying to blend it as best as I can. I really like this combination of colors. And uh, to answer John's question, something that I normally don't do is use black. And lately I've been playing with that more in my art. Now, today's not an example of that, but I've been playing with using more black. It's kind of nice because it sort of highlights the other colors so much because everything sort of drops down. And then all you're left with is everything else. It's almost like making a spotlight on everything else on the page. And I really like that. Um, there's a art journalist named Fonda Clark Haight, H-A, 
I G H T. I hope I'm saying that right. Hate or height. I'm not sure. Um, and she does that a lot in her journals. And I've really been appreciating the way that that works. Okay. So I think you guys can see how that's kind of creating some more depth in the color. And I like the way that the center area just kind of pops out. And I think, let's see. I think that I'd like to see some stuff happening on the other side. So we're going to go ahead and do some more circles over here. Um, a lot of people really talk about struggling to make time for their art. And I think there are a number of things that come into that. Obviously, there are some people who really do have such a very busy schedule and they're responsible um, for many people. Like I was at a wonderful conference a couple of years ago doing um, a presentation on something sort of similar to this. Um, in a workshop, and um, it was called the CARE Conference, and it was all people who were responsible for um, someone who was elderly or disabled in some way, or both. And a lot of these, most of the folks in the workshop were women, and most of them were responsible for two generations, so they were responsible for their parent usually who had some sort of um, illness or dementia or what have you, and then also responsible for their kids and lots of them also trying to hold down a job or perhaps they had a spouse with Alzheimer's. Um, and time really, really is at a premium for those folks. And it really is hard to find any time at all. Um, but there are a lot of little tricks um, that you can use. And obviously, as you're thinking about any of these suggestions, you'll want to really adapt it to what works for you. Oh, sorry. Um, you'll want to adapt it to what really works for you. Um, but some of the things that I often like to do and like to suggest for people is one, carrying that portable art kit, I think makes a huge difference. So um, one little tip is every time you think to pull out your phone, and maybe look at something online. Instead, pull out your portable art kit with your little journal, right? And if you've got a little pen like this inside, you can just open it up and spend just a couple of minutes. If you're doing something this simple, it, you know, it's not gonna, you don't have to like get back in the mindset or anything. You can just pull it out and do something. Um, you might even do something as simple as just drawing lines, right? especially if you're feeling anxious or overwhelmed or unfocused or you don't know what kind of art you want to do, something like this is very, very effective, I find, for a lot of people um, to really kind of get yourself back into a centered place. Um, you can also work on, now here's basically, this is based off of what we're doing right now. It's based off of this, except this is all, all black and white, of course. But something like this, you can just pick it back up. It, you don't need to... Um, have any really special materials or anything and you could be sitting in a line at a doc you know say, sitting in the waiting room at the doctor's office or even in a line at the supermarket um, there's definitely times when I'm standing there and I'm looking at you know trashy gossip magazines or whatever and I could be just doodling for a few minutes you know and what would that do for your spirit and your soul and your creativity if instead of looking at your phone or doing something else you spent that time dedicating a little bit of time to yourself and your art. So that's one idea. Um, another idea is to really think about making a commitment to your art by making sure you make space for your art in your house. And that's kind of a twofold thing. One is putting your art out in places, right? So that you have a place to celebrate your art. And it doesn't all have to be sort of super complicated things. Like, I don't know if you can see this piece right there. Um, you know, that's just a chalk pastel piece. It's not super complicated, but there's something about it I really like and enjoy. 
And so really celebrating those things that you like, even if it's taking a piece and cutting out one little piece of it that you enjoy, put it up somewhere so that you can celebrate it. I think that that really does a lot to encourage me to make more art. So really putting things out and visible. And you'll see that other people will start to comment about it, whether it's you know your friends or your family that are over your house and they see it. Um, and that's gonna give you encouragement. I'm enjoying my iced latte while we're together. Um, and then the other thing is making a space to make art. And a lot of people tell me that they really don't have any space in their house. And I know that some people may have um, very, very limited space. But I have to say, I have seen people with extremely tiny spaces make space for art. And I think that if you really make it a priority in your life, you will make space for it, whether it's in um, a closet that you convert into an, your own personal art space, or it's um, buying a pull down table that folds up into the wall and you pull it down and you have a little art you know, bin that sits right next to it and then you're all ready to go, you know, your journal's on top of there, you've got things ready and accessible whether it's um, putting a little desk in the corner of your dining room or your living room. Um, I think that you really can make space for it. It's just a matter of making it a priority. Um, if you've got so much sort of clutter and everything in your house that things are in the way, then you know that may be something that you wanna address first. And um, you know, then you can make sure that you have space for the things that really are important to you. And if art really is important to you and you know in your soul and in your heart that it really does feed you and help you and help you stay grounded and centered and feeling good and inspired and wanting to do something, then it should be a priority. And you have permission to make it a priority. It is not uh, indulgent to do that. It is a way of taking care of yourself and the better you take care of yourself, the better you're able to give to other people and the more you're able to give to other people. And I mean, I can definitely say that's true, at least in my life and in the life of, of a lot of the people that I work with. Um, in addition to teaching about our journaling and art and creativity, at Mindful Art Studio, I'm also an art therapist, and so I have to be really thoughtful about my self-care and my energy and how I'm giving to other people. And I have to do art. There has to be space for art and the arts in my life. And so it happens at least in my life, and again, I can't speak for everybody in everyone's circumstances, but at least I have found in my life and in the lives of most of my clients pretty much everybody's able to find a way to make it happen. It may look different for different people, um, but really making that time to take care of yourself, I think happens once you make a decision that it's a priority. And once you feel that in your heart, then it just happens because you make it a priority. If it's not a priority and everybody else and every thing else is a priority, well then of course it's not gonna happen. And again, I can't speak for everybody and everybody's circumstances. And so as you're listening, you're going to take this on board in, you know, knowing your life and yourself and how things work for you. But generally speaking, this is what I have found. So I am just really enjoying watching these circles appear. I'm letting the art piece really direct me as to how dense it ought to be or not. Um, and right now it's just feeling really fun to just fill in the little holes in between each circle. And so I'm doing that. So see how I'm really letting it lead me, at least with this technique that I'm using right now. Like John pointed out, there are times that you wanna break out of comfort zones and everything, but this is really a technique where we're looking to just let things flow and not think 
and just notice what that feels like, noticing what you notice in your body, areas of relaxation. If you're noticing areas of tension, can you breathe into that? Really allowing your drawing practice to be, you know, much like people use yoga, letting it help you to bring more awareness to yourself and your body and your needs and be really a relaxation tool for you. And I think that's really powerful. I mean, a lot of people, myself included, really struggle to meditate in a more traditional sense, to really sit down and quiet the mind and center in. Um, it's a good thing I can see my hair, guys, because <laughs> it's getting crazy. Um, a lot of people really struggle with that, but I think that drawing this way where it's really something that you don't have to think about makes that mindful presence in the moment in exactly what you're doing and noticing through the five senses, it makes that very accessible to a lot more people. And that's one of the things that I really love about art and especially about these simple drawing techniques. And again, if this is feeling like too much or you feel too uncentered to do something like this, it is absolutely 100% okay for you to take a page or if it's a page, this is a pretty big journal page. So, you know, if you have a journal that's this big, you might even want to just divide it into four sections or something um, and really just use that space to just draw lines. That's okay. You can... Just show up at the page and that's all you do. I had, um, I definitely take a lot of cues from yoga and my yoga practice. And I had a teacher years and years ago when I first started practicing who um, actually was a great lesson in first impressions because she was a Texan with a real thick Southern accent. She had really big hair like up to here and long crazy nails. And my first impression was like, this lady's the yoga teacher. She's not she's not a yogi. She doesn't look like a yogi. She's not going to be good. And oh my God, she was so good. And she was so good at looking at the parallels between what happens on the yoga mat and how you show up um, and how you show up in life. And one of the things that she said that has stayed with me all these years is there are days that I get to the yoga mat and all I do is roll around. You know, I get my, I get on my back and I, pull my knees up and I just roll my back and I just kind of do what feels right. And then there are other days that I get to the mat and I do a super strenuous um, workout with lots of balance poses and strength-based poses. And I really just try to let myself, when I'm doing my practice for myself, I really try to tune into what I need in the moment and be very mindful and attuned to myself and give myself that gift. And I really feel like all of the same statements really apply for drawing and for art journaling and for art practice in general. You know, I believe that we as humans create art because there's this innate need in us to create. I had um, another friend who very wisely once pointed out that we consume all day. Think about all the things you consume. You consume air, you consume food, you consume words, you consume obviously now lots of, you know, media and things on the internet and television shows, movies, and um, you know, all the things that you see with your eyes, that's all consumption. And you know, how, powerful is it when you can balance it out by creating, right? This is, this is what one of my English teachers um, used to call thising forth. That was from some English writer, don't ask me which one, because I don't know. But, you know, this, is, this, this didn't exist before, right? I mean, this is powerful if you think about it, right? Like, we've been spending this time together, and in the last 39 minutes, I have brought into fruition, and I'm guessing you also, have brought into fruition where you are at your desk or your table or your space, you've brought into fruition something that did not exist before, never has existed before. Um, and before you get caught up in thinking that yours is not original enough or this or that, 
it's never going to be original enough. I really want to invite you to let that go. Um, you're never going to create something that's 100% uh, original. But it will be authentic. And that's the important part. It's you. It's got your stamp on it. And so really just go with it and give yourself permission to create something today, right now. Even if you only do it for five minutes, it's a really, really, really powerful statement to the universe of, hey, I exist. I am giving thanks and gratitude for everything that I am getting and receiving and noticing. And again, this is where the mindfulness comes in for me. And I am putting something out there into the world. And, you know, folks out there for like taking my example, you know, people out there might be looking at this and they might be saying like, Ugh, I don't like that or that doesn't look like art to me or I don't appreciate that or I don't, you know, I don't see the value in that art piece or I don't think that's a fun technique and that's okay because it was for me and I also am offering it to you and it's gonna, it's gonna strike someone, right? There, there might be, you know, 15 people watching this and you know, for 10 of them, it doesn't hit home. And I'm really okay with that because for let's say five or three or something, even if it's just for one, it's gonna hit home for somebody or something that I'm saying is gonna hit home for somebody. And that's really valuable. That means something to me. And it brings meaning to what I do and meaning to my work. And even if I'm sitting alone and nobody ever sees this, I'm bringing something into being that never existed before. And for me, that balance, just like we breathe in and breathe out, is an important give and take of life. And I, I feel like that's part of why it's so balancing to make art. Because we, we, we take so much. We take and we take and we take and we take. And it's important to also give back to, to the world and just have an intake and an outtake so that there's this flow just like with our breath or just like with our food it's it's a natural thing and that's why i think it's so natural for humans to create and i get so fired up about the fact that for me everybody is creative and if you're sitting here watching this and you don't think that you're creative and maybe you are one of those people who says i can't draw a straight line i don't have a creative bone in my body or things like that, I would really challenge you to begin thinking about, maybe even pretend that you're, let's say you're me, right? Because you know this is my perspective. So pretend you're me, looking at your life, looking for the places where you're creative, right? And I want to remind you of a really great definition of creativity, which is something that's new and something that's useful. And how many times you create something that's new and useful. So I always like to give the example of a computer programmer because there are so many of them around here. I live in the Boston area, so they're just, you know, it's places like crawling with <laughs> programmers. Um, they are incredibly creative people. And I, a lot of times hear a lot of them saying, oh no, you know, I'm not creative. I don't do anything creative. I never make art, but how many new useful things do they make every single day? Constant, right? You know, somebody cooking, incredibly creative. Somebody working in the garden and coming up with new plotting, um, you know, designs or what have you, or ways to lay things out, incredibly creative. Um, you know, especially when you're dealing with natural beauty and highlighting that that's incredibly creative you know people who um are very creative and innovative with their words you know i know so many people who have such a great sense of humor and that's that's incredibly incredibly creative so um amy willette is on hello i hope i'm saying your name right let me know if i am um and she says Um, I found these um, color postcards at the art store. They come with blank shapes. You can fill in the colors. That helped me be creative yesterday. You're reminding me of how glad I am that I did that. Creating felt really good. Oh my gosh, that's really awesome to hear. Um, and I, I love that comment. I love that you shared it. 
Um, and it reminds me too that sometimes we need a little bit of structure and kind of um, to help us to know a starting point and where to get started. And I guess this is part of, um, and maybe this is part of what you're getting at, this is part of my idea here um, is to give people kind of a starting point. It doesn't mean that this is what you need to do, but if you're looking for an idea, here's one. Um, and you're right, it does, it feels so incredibly good when you do something, and so finding ways to, I like to say, tempt yourself into doing art is so, so important. Um, especially when you're someone who has realized how healing and how helpful it can really be in your life. I think you've got to really be thinking about, and it's so fun to be thinking about, you know, how can I tempt myself to do art? How can I inspire myself? How can I use my, you know, time online? Like, should I be stalking that ex-boyfriend from high school or <laughs> on Facebook? You know, or could I be looking for a Facebook group on art journaling or on painting or on mixed media or, you know, creative writing or what have you? Which would be a better use of my time? Which would feed me and feed my self-care and my artistic self and give me more energy uh, with which to do the other things that I want and need to do with my life. You know, and if, if the answer is honest, I think most of the time, at least in my life, it's not, you know, stalking the ex-boyfriend on Facebook or what have you. Um, you know, it's really looking for creative inspiration. I spend a lot of time, um, looking for ideas, for instance, on Pinterest. And by the way, my um, name on Pinterest is just Amy Maracle. That's M-A-R-I-C-L-E. Um, oh, good. Amy says I'm saying her name right. Thank you. Um, I'm glad. Um, but uh, yeah, and I, I find so many good ideas on there. And often when I find something I really love that inspires me, I will um, take a note from um, Aust the author, Austin Cleon, Cleon, I'm not sure if I'm saying his name right, um, who wrote that book, um, Steal Like an Artist, which is such genius, um, about, you know, I'll take a, a screenshot of it to remind myself that I want to do a piece of art that's very much inspired by that. And I might even start out with kind of a structure that sort of imitates that piece, but always, 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 it turns out to be totally my own thing. You can kind of look at it side by side with the other and see the connections, but it's my piece. Um, it's my art and it's definitely not a copy. What I like about what he says is that, you know, stealing like an artist is not about plagiarism. It's not about doing a straight on copy. Although I will say there is, you know, as long as you're not going to um, try to sell it or anything, there is a lot of, um, and I probably wouldn't post it on the internet, but there's a lot of value in copying the artists that you admire. So for instance, um, in case it's not obvious, I really admire Georgia O'Keeffe. And um, so I've definitely copied some of her art just to learn from her techniques and how she does her, you know, brush strokes and how she combines colors. I did, um, a copy of one of her um, abstract pieces. And one of the things I learned is that she very frequently puts uh, some of the most bright spots, like light spots in her paintings next to some of the most dark. And so it really makes them stand out. And that's something that as much as I've studied her paintings and her work, I never ever noticed until I did a copy and a piece that was closely inspired by her work. But I have to tell you, even the piece that was closely inspired by her work was not her piece. It was definitely not her piece. No one would have looked at it and said that I tried to copy her piece. It was my own. It became its own thing. So I highly, highly, highly encourage you to get online, find work that you admire, find things that stir you and that you say, like, oh my gosh, I wish I made that. I'm so jealous. And, um, you know, start trying it out. Start copying it and see what happens, see where what you learn and where it takes you. Even if you ended up with something that was a pretty straight copy, like I did that for um, an assignment in one of my art classes. Um, I did a copy of a, um, his name just flew out of my head. 
Uh, he was a contemporary of Gustav Klimt. What's his name? Egon Schiele. I did um, a copy of Egon Schiele's work. He's a, a line drawing artist who does these really, really incredible line drawings um, with some very strange, like, um, uh, hand gestures always. It's one of the things, like, the fingers are always super long, and he's always making some funny little... Um, expression with the hands, but they're incredibly detailed, incredibly beautiful. Um, he's also highly controversial because he does a lot of very sexualized pieces, but um, those as aside, just his line quality and everything is really amazing. And I did a copy of one of his pieces and um, I just learned so much and it definitely made an impact on my style and I definitely took things from it that I wanted to take from it. So I definitely encourage you to copy the masters, but not just masters, copy people that you just admire. One of the artists that I really, really am loving right now is Lisa Congdon. I hope I'm saying her name right. Um, I think it's C-O-N-G-D-O-N.com. Um, and she does a lot of painting and pattern, and she's just a beautiful, beautiful artist. And um, I'm loving her work and I'm definitely sort of itching to pull out some canvas and do some things that are pretty closely inspired by her work. So definitely encourage you to copy that which you love because it will lead you to expand your work. And that kind of goes along with um, John's question too. So guys, if you're just joining by any chance, we are having a little open studio artist chat while I'm working here, and maybe while you're working on your art too, I hope so. Um, and we're really just talking about ways to use art as self-care and some different techniques for drawing that might help you do that and different ways to tempt yourself to make art. If you want to join in on the conversation, there should be a grid with nine little boxes on the top right hand corner of your screen. You can just hit that and it'll bring up a um, Q&A box on the bottom right hand side of your screen and you can type your question or your comment in there. I definitely welcome comments too because you guys um, like Amy did have so much to offer in terms of good ideas. For sure someone watching now or on replay is going to say like, wow, that was such a good idea. Um, I'm going to look for note cards like that, that have already colors and shapes, because that'll give me sort of a starting point, And it's not just going to be a blank, scary white page. And I think that's a great idea. I have to say, I am really, really enjoying this circle technique. And I think it's one of the things that I'm probably going to try out on my next um, piece on canvas. I'd really like to do something maybe with some of these colors and kind of um, pastels and pinks. I've got another um, piece. I like doing artwork with my kids. Um, I feel almost guilty in a way because they have such artistic freedom and abandon because they're not bound by all of the quote rules that we think we know about art and they just are in the moment and they create which is exactly what we're striving for hopefully at least that's what I'm striving for and I'm encouraging you to do um, but they create so freely and then it's so fun to just play off of that together and both be adding elements. So, you know, if you're somebody who has kids, I highly, highly, highly encourage you to collaborate on art projects with them. Don't instruct, let them do their thing and lead. And, you know, you can add um, and so forth. It's really fun. Um, cool. So guys, I, I think that's it. I That's feeling like we're probably to the end. If there are any last minute questions, I'm just going to give an opportunity to ask them now or comments. Um, I do want to let you know that if you liked this, um, 
open studio time today. You can subscribe to the Mindful Art Studio email sign-up list. I've got that in the right-hand side box. There's a showcase there, and um, there's an email sign-up page that you can head on over to and sign up for um, finding out about other live webinars and um, tutorials. I do lots of, um, unlike today, much more directed uh, art journaling and other art technique webinars that are a lot of fun. Um, you'll also see um, I've got, you know, lots of blog posts and other free resources for people. Um, and if you're looking uh, to get more than that, I've got uh, a new ebook out that's a very economic guide to starting e-journaling at just $3. And um, that's called Starting Your Art Journal, and I've got that in the showcase as well. So you can check that out. Um, and if you're interested in kind of connecting with other artists and finding that artist community, you can um, join our online community. It's a private Facebook group called Creative Self Care on Facebook. And we'd really love to have you there. People are super, super supportive. It's a very um, uh, great place, especially if you're just starting out, you're looking for some encouragement, you're feeling unsure. Um, great, great place. I can't even tell you how lucky I feel to have so many great people in that group. Um, inevitably, every time someone new joins, people just, you know, kind of all rush forward and are so um, welcoming and support each other with their art so much. It's really, really a fun thing to be a part of. I feel very blessed to have it. So thank you again. It's mindfulartstudio.com, and I really hope to see you there on the blog. Um, hop in there today if you've enjoyed this and um, make a comment about the drawing technique and any ideas that you'd like to share and how you think you might be able to use it in your life. Um, and um, thanks so much. I'll see you next time.